In early January 1945, the 1st 5th Queen's Royal Surrey Regiment, part of the 7th Farmer Division, found themselves holding the line after the Christmas period at the village of Gibberuk in Holland. Within days of bringing in the new year, they'd be pulled back to the village of Geelan to prepare for the next stage of the war. Army Physical Training Corps Sergeant Instructor Robert John Maguire had been in France with the 38th Reinforcement Holding Unit. He would soon join the ranks of the Queen's in late December 1944 and experience his first action as a frontline NCO just weeks after his posting to the regiment and take part in an often overlooked operation in the Ruhr in early 1945. This man is my late grandfather. I recently came into possession of a diary he wrote from January to December 1945. In this video, I'll use his words with after action reports to tell the story of the Battle of Susteren. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. The British 12 Corps, part of 2nd Army, were tasked with pushing out German forces in an area of Holland known as the Ruhr Triangle. Codenamed Operation Blackcock, the need to launch the offensive was outlined in the After Action Report. Operation Blackcock was a large-scale methodical mopping up operation. It was not planned to make any deep thrust into enemy defences or capture large numbers of prisoners of war. It proceeded from stage to stage almost entirely as planned and was successfully completed with minimum casualties. I've created this simplified map to show the objectives of each element of the operation. 12 Corps, consisting of 7th Armoured Division, 43rd Wessex Infantry Division and the 52nd Lowland Infantry Division. Opposing them, the German defenders consisted of the 176th German Infantry Division and the 183rd Volksgrenadier Division and Regiment Hübner, a force of Fallschirmjäger, German paratroopers who were now used in an infantry role. 7th Armoured Division would push up on the left flank, attacking towards the town of Ruhrmund. The 52nd Lowlands were to assault towards the town of Waldfuck and Heinsberg to the northeast, and the 43rd Wessex Infantry Division would swing to the southeast towards Dremen. The 1st 5th Queens, acting as part of the 131st Lorried Infantry Brigade, had been dubbed Task Angel and were to capture the villages of Susteren, Dieteren, Ect and St Just across the Vublik River. Robert Maguire would go into Susteren with B Company. He added this to his diary. O Group today, it's on. The major push. The weather is against us, but we can make it. Well Jerry, here we come again. In the early morning of the 17th of January, the weather was not on the British side. Thick fog and snow made it impossible for tanks and most of the carriers to make it across the river. This meant the Queens would go in without any tank support. The troops crossed the river under the cover of darkness around 6am. Major John Edward Evans led B Company of the Queens into Susteren. He recalled entering the village in 1994 for the Imperial War Museum. We got within 15 yards of the objective before we heard the Germans shout. Having learned uh, a little by this time, having been in battle for many months and fought several battles, we knew what to do, and um, we immediately rushed in screaming. One or two of us fighting from the hip, but the others absolutely screaming. It, it, was a, it was a marvelous ploy because it just, the people on the receiving end just froze. And there was no reply at all. We just charged in there. We took 37 German prisoners without, without losing a man, without losing any casualties whatsoever. After this initial success, the Queens prepared themselves for the inevitable German counterattacks. By 8am, German self-propelled guns, along with panzers, had started to lay siege to the town. However, they were kept at bay. One of the armoured fighting vehicles was knocked out by a Piat, the company's only anti-tank weapon. During this action, Major Evans was wounded and took shelter in a cellar. There was an explosion. It hit my arm. Um, I went round in circles and fell down the stairs. I landed on top of uh, Lieutenant Stone, and he'd been killed by the same blast. Um, and uh, I realised my arm uh, had been hit. I couldn't feel anything at all at that time. 
So I sat down on a chair beside a uh, small table. The, it was a very small cellar. One could just about stand upright in it. We were nursed, well, I was nursing that there. Things were, everything was going on above you. The Queens were now fighting off a strong counter-attack at battalion strength. The fighting was bitter and hard fought, but the infantry held firm. They had been aided in their defence of the town by the guns of the Royal Horse Artillery. Major Jack Tyrrell was commanding D Battery, RHA, who were in support of the Queens during their attack. He had already been instrumental earlier in the battle, directing artillery in full view of German troops. For his bravery during the battle, he received a bar to his military cross in April 1945. The citation from the London Gazette reads, The attack by the first fifth queens on Sustran was successful, but soon after first light, a strong enemy counter-attack of battalion strength, supported by tanks and self-propelled guns, developed against the part of the town already held by the queens. Though he was in a forward and exposed position, and under constant mortar and small arms fire, Major Tyrrell continued throughout a period of more than an hour to bring down the fire of the supporting artillery group, with such accuracy and effect that the counter-attack was held in check and finally driven back. My grandfather wrote this about fighting in the town. It was really bloody, but we captured Susteren. Every inch had to be fought for hand to hand. Nazi tanks counter-attacked. We had heavy casualties and prisoners of war taken. By 9am in the morning, the tanks of 1st RTR were finally able to come up to support the infantry. With this added tank support, Sustrum was almost fully cleared out by 3pm in the afternoon of the 17th. The remaining German defenders were finally routed by the Queens on the 19th of January. After the initial battle, the Queens continued to attack and liberate the towns of Echt and St Just during Operation Blackhawk between the 13th and 27th of January 1945, fighting hard wherever they went. Forever grateful to the first fifth queens who liberated them, a tapestry was made and presented to the regiment after the war by the people of Sustran as a token of their gratitude. It was held in the Queen's Royal Regiment Museum in Guildford in England until it was unfortunately destroyed in a fire in 2015. In a letter to Major Evans in 1985, a resident of Sustran spoke of their admiration of his actions during that day. Thank you for what you and your brave men of B Company did for us 40 years ago. You brought back freedom into our beloved village, Sustran. The loss of men in that terrible fight had been enormous. Those men will be on my mind forever because they gave their lives for our liberty. I will leave you with my grandfather's thoughts of the battle from the first page of his diary. I shall never forget the bloody battle on January 17th. No tanks to support us. Jerry flung at us, but we held firm. Thanks for watching. This is the first time I've used my grandfather's diary on the channel or shared any of it publicly. If you like this video, please consider subscribing for more military history and I'll catch you in the next one.